guys welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna talk about silicones and how they negatively affect my curls how they wreak havoc on my curls so um, I transitioned for 24 months two years so halfway into my transition you know I started you know researching and everything more on natural hair and I learned about silicones and how it negative negatively affect curls so I just throw them all out you know when you relax and just about every product you use on your hair is going to have a silicone in it. So I threw everything out. And so um, I just went straight to the Curly Girl method. But basically with silicones, from my understanding, they basically have three different purposes. There's a whole lot of silicones. I will try to list some throughout this video. But you have the silicones on your hair polish or your hair shine. That helps give you shine. Then you have your silicones on your um, conditioners, the dimethicone, which gives you slip feels very moisturizing you have those silicones and then you have um you have your heat protected silicones for your heat protect heat protected and anti-frizz so basically those are three different functions that silicones do but from my understanding is the silicones bond and crystallize to the strand and it prevents moisture from coming in so the effects of curly hair is you have hair that's frizzy and you have hair that doesn't feel as moisturized. That's what my hair went through when I decided to start using silicones. And how it happened was, I was using a Curly Girl Friendly product, Paul Mitchell Deconditioner. Conditioner. I don't know how long I used it, but this is a 32, this is a one liter uh, bottle, and I bought at least four or five of these. So I've used this for a while, I'm thinking over a year, at, at, minimum, at minimum six months. So it has PEG dimethicone, which PEG means it's modified water soluble. It's supposed to rinse out in water, so with co-washing, it's even better. But after using it for a while, I noticed that um, my curls start changing. Start looking different. I'm thinking my curls going from something. They look a little dull. Um, doesn't last as long. Look a little frizzy. The curls aren't really popping with my twist out. So. I end up trying different products, and I tried and tried, I'm like, what is really going on? And after some time, I figured that's what it was. The water-soluble, curly-friendly product did not work with my curls because I wasn't shampooing. So maybe if I was shampooing and using the PEG uh, Dimethicon, maybe it would have worked. But I was on the Curly Girl Method, and I wasn't using any shampoo. So I decided to shampoo my hair. Oh, and it felt great, too, when I shampooed it. I'm like, shoot like this shampoo so I started shampooing I'm like since I'm shampooing I might as well try silicones and see how I like it and um uh, I was loving this the Aussie three minute miracle I tried the moist and I loved it and then I tried the strong and I really fell in love with it oh and on my baby's hair he had a problem area like in the crown part mm, took care of all of that I, I really loved it with his hair um uh, he was very young, so I didn't blow dry his hair or anything, and I, and I was doing wash and goes in, fall, in the um, spring and summer. So in the wintertime, I twisted and braided his hair because I didn't want him having wet hair. So I used um, I used silicones on his hair as well. And um, also, the Garnier Fruitis. I was using all of those fortifying conditioners. I had the yellow, the orange, the green, all those colors. I was using those to co-wash, as well as their damage eraser. I was using that as a treatment. I was using the Afro G, the Curlific, that's the um, texture treatment. I was using the leave-in. I didn't really like the leave-in because it wasn't thick enough to moisturize my curls. Another co-wash I was using is Herbal Essence Naked. It has a uh, silicone in it, dimethicone. And then Trader Joe ended up uh, changing its formula. And it has dimethicone in it. I was using that as a co-wash as well. So my hair was just filled with silicones and, you know... You know, because when you're on a curly girl method, you got to look down every item on the ingredient list to make sure it's not a silicone. Every silicone doesn't end in comb. And they can be a bit pricey, but shoot, what's this? This is like $3 at Walmart. And this is like $3 as well. And a lot of times they have $2 off coupons in the mail. So that's what I was using on my hair. And then maybe about four or five months of consecutively using, um, um, Silicones, the cold wash, the deep condition, all of that. Um, um, my curls start changing. Like, hmm, I did notice. Well, earlier in, I noticed that after I wash my hair and rinse out my conditioner, my curls are gone. 
Um, at first I was like, hmm, I'm liking these silicones. This is making my hair look thicker. Uh, it's appearing thicker. My hair's gotten thicker. But you know, if you put gel in your hair and you got a smooth, sleek, and all of that, but as soon as you, if you comb through it or brush through it or even blow dry out your curls, it's going to be big and poofy. So that's what it was doing. It was taking the curls on my hair. My hair was like bigger, fuller because it was taking up, taking out the curls. The curls weren't, um, they weren't, um, showing. They weren't apparent. Um, can't think of the word I'm looking for. I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm trying to move it on. And so, um, but as soon as I put in my styling product, I leave in, the curls came. So I'm like, hey, that's cool. That's cool. I keep using as long as I still can get my curls. But like I said, after about four months, my braid outs went from sleek and defined to less defined, fuller, 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 till my day one braid out was huge, big, frizzy, puffy. I even tried a hot oil treatment, which the first two or three ingredients was silicone. My hair was a poofy afro. Not saying there's anything wrong with the afro, but that was not the look I was going for. It was massive, just just from the oil. So I knew that wasn't gonna work for me. So I'm like, gotta slow down a little bit with the silicones. So I had started um, co-washing my hair like every two to three days because my braid outs were last. They were like get big and poofy and frizzy. So I realized silicones isn't gonna work for my hair so I end up shampooing my hair and slowly I saw a difference not instantly I use a sulfate shampoo a clarifying shampoo all that but still my curls didn't pop back just instantly over time um over time I got my curls back um so after that I was starting to do wash and goes I would do them every year like summer spring it'll be a fail so I move on then next year I do it so maybe by my fifth year trying it <laughs> I end up perfecting it, and so I've been doing wash and goes for like maybe the past 15 months. That's all I've been doing. Um, but um, with gels, you know, you get you get a lot of curl definition. And my hair isn't my hair isn't thick. This is a no gel wash and go. So, but my hair isn't thick. But once I use gel on, it was like real slick. Um, for some of the gels that I've used, some of the Eco Styler gels, I'm like, I want my hair to be a little full, more volume. I said, I remember when I used the silicones, kind of made my hair kind of full and puffy like. And when I was doing braid outs, you know, I got to unbraid my hair, so I'm doing more manipulation. But once I do my wash and go, I style my curls, it dries, it's it, I don't have to pull it apart. So maybe, maybe I'll get some fullness without all the freezing. So I decided to try my silicones again. I tried the Aussie Strong. And I tried the Garnier Fruits, Garnier Fruities products. And I tried the uh, the hair treatment. And within two weeks, y'all, just two weeks, my hair, not just the ends, but the whole strand all the way up, felt kind of dry. I just felt different. It wasn't as moisturized. And like immediately, the first time that um, I used uh, the silicone to co-wash, I noticed that after I rinsed my conditioner out, getting ready to add a conditioner in and style that my hair was freeze. I mean, it was no visible curls. I'm like, yeah, I expect that. That's cool. But, um, seemed like my hair did get a little fuller, but with my hair feeling dry, not moisturized, I was like, I'm done. Silicones aren't going to work for me. They're not going to work for me. So, um, so I, so I end up shampooing my hair, and I'm starting to see my hair is in a 100% there. Still some little frizzy parts, but um, it's getting back there. It takes, seems like it takes about a month or a month and a half for the silicones to completely dissipate from your hair, even with shampooing. That's what I've learned with my hair, because I've used them two, two different times, going back to them. Now, with my son's hair, that spring came, I don't know if I said this already but spring came along and I was trying to do wash and go and there was no curl in sight I'm like what's going on what is with my baby hair and uh I was so frustrated I was getting ready to cut his hair out and I shampooed his hair maybe after a couple of what maybe after a few washes his curls started coming back so I vowed never to use silicones on his hair at all and lately I've been doing wash and goes year round on his hair but something I noticed, the kinky of the hair, the quicker the effect of silicones will have on your curls. Like I said, it affected my son's hair very quickly, but it didn't it didn't take effect as quickly on my curls. You know, I have kinky hair too, but my curls are a little bit looser than his. So, 
that is my silicone story. Um, you guys are, uh, tell me, um, do you use silicones? Did you used to use silicones? What experience did you have with silicones? Was your hair frizzy? Your hair not lasting as long? Did your hair feel dry, like it needed to be moisturized? Tell me your experience with silicones. That's my story. Thanks for watching.